Good to have you here. The last day of the year. What an amazing thing it is. I can't believe that uh, 2023 is already finished. How many of you can believe that this year is done? It's like, wow, it has gone so quickly. This morning, I want to speak uh, to you uh, some reminder in the, what our focus was this year. Let me just uh, sum it up and to begin with that God loves you very much. Do you, do you know that this morning? That he loves you very much and in his love that we would be all we can be for his glory. That was the focus of this year. In his love being all we can be for his glory. And I just, I thank God for what has taken place despite who we may be. Despite our failings perhaps, our flaws, our weaknesses. And I just say thank you Lord, you desire to do a work, not just on us, but you desire to do a work through us. Hallelujah. I, I, this service, uh, I don't want to keep you longer, but I do want to share with you from one verse, and that's Revelation 17, 14, and we'll just, uh, we'll work around this verse uh, this, this morning. Revelation 17, verse 14. It says, these will make war with the Lamb. And just to have a little bit of context, we're talking about the very end of the Great Tribulation. We're talking about a gathering of forces of evil and wickedness to come against the people of, of Israel and this battle of Armageddon, and this in the valley of Megiddo. And it says, these will make war. All the nations that are coming together. It says there's ten kings that will give their, their allegiance to the beast and to the false prophet. And they will come and they will gather in the Middle East, in Israel, in the Valley of Megiddo. And it says these millions of individuals, it hasn't happened yet, they will come to make war and they will be making war against the Lamb. These will make war with the Lamb. And we're not just talking about man, we are talking about that which is behind everything or so much. We're talking about Satan. We're talking about his hordes that are there and are, are very real. Making war. Final, this final battle at the end of the tribulation. These will make war with the Lamb. I like what it says. There's no dragging it out. The Lamb will overcome them. The Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Called, chosen, and faithful. And today, I want to just entitle this message, Those Who Are With Him. Those who are with him. Those who are with him. Called, chosen, and faithful. I just thank the Lord. There's this emphasis on the lamb. A lamb is not a animal of, what should I say, ferociousness. It doesn't have huge fangs. It doesn't have big claws. It doesn't have a powerful body. Have you ever seen a lamb? Have you ever seen? We lived, when we were growing up, we lived on a street, and at the end, or near the end of the street, there was a farmer who had lambs. Like, what a, a sight. These little 
or these bigger barrels with these tiny little feet sticking out from that big barrel body and the lamb in its entirety, definitely not. This illustration or picture of ferociousness. May I say this? Jesus, the lamb, has already overcome the enemy. In his death, he overcame. The lamb is all about the death of Jesus Christ. It is all about what he did for us and for all of mankind. And even as the enemy would think, this is the weakest moment. I've got him. He's going to be crucified. Man, he sure wasn't thinking. God wasn't really thinking when they, they, they decided that Jesus would come 2,000 years ago. God really wasn't thinking. And yet, in this weakest of moments, supposedly, the greatest victory was won. And that lamb, he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. There's a, a saying, and I me I've mentioned this saying recently, and it really struck me years ago already, and it's uh, from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. But I want to read a, f a few verses before this from verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. The gospel that was given. This is Paul writing to the, to the young pastor, Timothy, instruction, saying, Timothy, I want you to remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead according to my gospel, the good news that was given to me by the Lord, and I share it with you, and I share again with you. I'm saying to you this morning, remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. For which I, that's Paul, which I suffer trouble as an evil evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. And I just want you to know this morning that the word of God is not chained. It is not limited. It is powerful. And so even though we may be in chains, even though we may be bound down, even though we may be beaten, the word of God is not chained. It is not restrained. It is not held back. And we can stand on the word of God in the worst of times. Hallelujah. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, for the believers, those that have come to the Lord, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And he's also speaking of those that have not come to the Lord yet, of those that are supposed to be children of God. We're talking about specifically about the Jews. The elect, for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And this is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we acknowledge the lamb, if we acknowledge what the lamb did for us, we shall also live with him. We shall overcome. We will overcome the enemy. We will overcome the things that come against us. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're going through today. But I'll tell you right now, every single one of us if we're not in it now, 
We will go through difficulties. We will go through storms. We will go through things that we would not expect. This has been an interesting year in so many ways. A moving forward powerfully. An establishing of things. I think of so many of you that are involved in prayer. There's been an expanding of those of you that are involved in prayer on a regular basis. There's been a, an expanding in a, in, of outreach. I just thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for that which has been put into place this year. There's been a foundation laid for a growth. And in the midst of all this, the enemy is coming. I have never been attacked as, as much as I've been attacked this year. In all the years of my life, I have not been attacked like this year. And by those at time, at times, would be believers. By believers. The things that were spoken and shouted and screamed. The distortions, the perceptions. I wonder, what is behind all of this? just want to share. The Lord knows where you're at. The Lord knows where you're at. Yesterday there was a baptismal service. Uh, this uh, church has used our facilities now three or four times for baptisms. I'm getting to know Pastor Binu. And so yesterday there was a, a person, not even from this city, that was getting baptized. She just came to the Lord in the last little while from London. And yesterday they, they came all the way from London for a, baptism, a baptismal service. And there was no place, I guess, there is a place, I'm sure, in London that they could get baptized. But for whatever reason, they chose to come here. And they chose to have Pastor Binu baptize Sheba, who had just come to the Lord. So I was here, just getting things ready for them. But interestingly enough, and I just I want to share this. The Lord knows what we need. And so I was just sitting at the back over here on the side, just monitoring the, the sound, which didn't need because he wasn't using a mic. <laughs> so I was on the side, and I was taking in a baptismal service from another, another tribe, another tongue, another nation, another people. I didn't understand a single word. I did not understand a single word of the service. But I understood the aspect of prayer. I understood the preaching of the word. I understood this aspect of coming into this tank here. The aspect of, of there being, once again, a confession of faith and, and a, a speaking into that person's life, even though I didn't understand a single word. I understood the prayers that went up. I understood even when they went from their language to a language of that they didn't know, maybe the, the tongues of angels. I understood that. And even as they, they were going through this baptismal service, part of it was, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I could very easily have slipped out the back door, wasn't really needed. I stayed in the service. 
Because I needed to be here yesterday, not for the baptism, as wonderful as that was, but I needed to be here to be encouraged. And after the service, a brother that I'd never met before, who did not know me, began to prophesy over me. He said, I, I see where you're at. And he began to prophesy things for my encouragement. He began to prophesy things that are, are, are in the making and in the works. If there is a wind that will blow through this place, there will be people that will be trying to get into this building to hear the word of God. I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As I say, as I, I, I recognize the enemy coming against me, I recognize the enemy will come against you. And the situations that you may be in, and you, you don't understand everything. I don't understand everything. I don't understand why, why people say sometimes the things they say. Like I say, I needed that encouragement. And the Lord gave the encouragement. I said, thank you, Lord, for confirming what you have already spoken. I understand why the enemy is so upset. And I want you to know this morning that when the enemy comes against you, there's a reason for it. It's not just random. Listen, if, he's, if he had you, he wouldn't be coming against you. He is there to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want you to know this morning that the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, what He did for us, the victory was won at that moment and in that moment of even of His death, the victory was already won. The Lord knows where you are at. He knows what you're going through. Turn to Him. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. It's just an acknowledgement we make by faith. Lord, I'm crucified with you. I acknowledge what you did for me. I acknowledge it. And I acknowledge what is done through the cross of Christ. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we can hang on to that faith, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, And the denying of him is where we put our faith. Let our faith remain in Jesus Christ. If we deny him, what we rest our faith in is if it is not in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, we deny him. Just keep your faith in Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain for us. And he will see you through. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. And I recognize sometimes that our faith is lacking. And I'll tell you right now, it was, it was like, man, I cannot believe the things that are coming against me. Lord, will you see me through? Will you see me through? Yes. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He will see you through whether you are not believing that he can see you through. He will see you through. I want to encourage you. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hallelujah. For the Lord that we serve... It says in Isaiah 57, 15, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I will dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to re revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. If you are lacking in faith, 
If your faith is weak, humble yourself before the Lord. With him who has a contrite and humble spirit, Lord, my faith is weak and I humble myself before you. And the Lord is saying that he will revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Hallelujah. So last night when I went to bed, this passage, Revelation 7, 17, 14, was upon me. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. And so I had a call very early in the morning, just before 2 o'clock came through, or there was a ding. Just That no, wasn't a call, it was a text. And my phone, I, I hadn't put it on vibrate. It was just on, and I heard the ding, and I, I woke up, and here was a text. The confirmation. The confirmation of who Jesus is. He is holy. He is righteous. He is above all things. King of kings and Lord of lords. In this passage, it says Lord of lords and King of kings. And as I went through the text, it was a prayer. As I went through this text, there was a speaking and a confirming in my heart. This is what I need to preach on this morning. So I want you to listen carefully. Let me just give uh, some background again. According to the word here, it says in Reve uh, Revelation 17, verse 12, just a few verses before, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast, the Antichrist. So this hasn't taken place yet. This is still to come. All right. So right now we're in chapters two and three of Revelation. We haven't ex experienced chapter four and five, and we definitely have not experienced chapter six through 19. We haven't, ex it's not been experienced yet. It's still to come. And so these 10 horns, horns talk of authority, which you saw are 10 kings, 10 rulers who have received no kingdom as yet. In fact, at that time, they, they weren't even in existence. I believe those kings are living right now. Those kings are living right now. And they will receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast, with the Antichrist. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. And these will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Even as we end this year in his love, being all that we can be for his glory, that we would be called, chosen, and faithful. Listen, so many of you already there with the calling. You've been chosen and faithful. Now, I know for myself, it's more the thing of, Lord, have I been faithful? Have I been faithful? See, he called us. He called me. He called you. And if you're here today, there may be a calling at this time. Those that are watching online, there may be a calling right now, even as I'm speaking within your heart, within your spirit, there is this voice that is coming to you. Thoughts in your mind, you know that God is calling you. Just respond in the affirmative. Yes, Lord. So many of you have responded to that call. You gave your life to the Lord. You gave your life to Christ. There's been a transformation that has taken place in you. For some of you, it's just been recently. For some of you, it's, it's been a number of years. For some of you, it has been decades. It's been... For those of you that got saved as a child, it's been 
for much of your life, most of your life. So long ago you were called and you responded positively to the call. As he calls you by name. As he comes to you personally. He came to you personally. You responded to that calling, to that knocking on your door, on your heart's door. Let me be a part of your life. Let me be a part of your life. You responded to that knocking, to that calling. Thank you, Lord. I'm already a part of those who are with him in this day, this day that is coming. This battle has taken place after that. That battle will not take long. It will not take long. And one day, those that are, are still left there of the, the, the Israelites, the, the Jews that right now, it makes sense that there's such a hatred for the Jews that this could possibly happen. Seems like those that were with them, even in the last few months, are turning apart from them or saying, eh, I don't want anything. Uh, you know what? Maybe we made a mistake in backing Israel. I'm not saying that they're perfect. Man, they need, they need Jesus. The Jews need Jesus. They're still looking for the Messiah. They need Jesus, just like we need Jesus. And it makes sense that this battle will take place. There's going to be such a hatred for them that will just escalate. Especially the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Man, they're going to be running and hiding. They will come back at the end of those seven years. They will be back in Jerusalem. They'll be back in their land and the Lord will be there when this attack comes. And we will be with them, with him. We will be with him because we, we've been called. You've been called. You have responded. Praise God. As I examine myself. To be all that I can be for his glory. I recognize I haven't arrived yet. Man, there's still stuff that needs to change in me. Even, even as I would ask, have I been all that I can be for his glory in this past year? I see things, good things. And I see other things that, man, have been revealed and pointed out to me. By the Holy Spirit, a conviction. Man, I need to change still. I haven't arrived yet. I know I haven't arrived yet, but I thank God. Even as we have been called, that his word says, and this is what Paul writes, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy to the Philipp Philippians uh, that, that are being written to. Philippians 1 verse th 3, and it says in verse 5, for your fellowship making a request for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. A fellowship in the gospel. A closeness. When you have fellowship with somebody, or, or there's a closeness. You're interacting. A fellowship with the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. There's an interaction. There's a grabbing a hold of it. There's a closeness to this idea and not just an idea of a reality and not just a reality we're talking life we're talking forgiveness of sins and we're talking life as we recognize Jesus Christ and the Lamb of God that was slain for us and there's a fellowship and we responded to this good news and there's been a calling in our life and even though we haven't arrived yet and I haven't arrived yet it says I can be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in me and in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ until he comes back for us and don't you ever think 
as the enemy comes against you, or even people would come against you and say what they may say, and the enemy would just say, yeah, that's right. And even there are times where they may be right. But I've been called. You've been called. You've responded to that call, and you've allowed Jesus in your life, and he has begun a good work in you. Even as I would examine myself, I still see much that needs to change. Praise God. He is able to make the change. He is able to make the change that we cannot, that we would look to him. Hallelujah. Not only are those that are with him called, but they are chosen. I choose you. You belong. There's a belonging. Not only have you been called, you opened up, but there's a choosing. I choose you. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 1. It says from verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He knew you before time began. And the offer, the calling went out to you. And you responded to that calling. That calling goes out to many. Many are called, but few are chosen. We need to respond to the calling. Because it goes out to many. And, and the gospel will go out to the entirety of this world. Matthew 24, I believe it's verse 14 or 15, it talks about the days that we're living in right now, that the gospel will be going out. And <clears throat> so much of what has been prepared this year already has been for the gospel to go out. The gospel to go out. Because you were chosen. You are chosen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved, in Jesus Christ, who is the beloved of the Father. In him we have redemption through his blood. Here we are again with the Lamb. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in, him, in himself so we could understand why he came, why he died, and we responded to it, and we, we were chosen of the Lord. You were chosen. None of this at this point. Being called or chosen has anything to do yet with where we are at in our day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. It's already happened. As your faith is in Jesus Christ, and you say, oh my goodness, I haven't arrived. We acknowledge that. But there's not, nothing of that at this point. It says we're called and we're chosen. You responded. If you didn't, you have opportunity this morning. Hallelujah. So having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. There's a gathering to be with him. Those that have gone before us, their spirit and soul, as they have believed in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, their soul and spirit is with the Lord. But there is a day coming when the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise, a new and glorious body given to the spirit and soul that is incorruptible, is immortal, is eternal. And I just thank the Lord that we will be gathered together to be with him. Those who are with him. Let me read again, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, 
he might gather together in one all things in Christ, through Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. He rejoices in us, the praise of his glory. Even as we believe in Jesus Christ and we keep our faith there. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So not only were you called and chosen, but there was a seal put on you the moment that you gave your life to Jesus Christ. The seal of the Holy Spirit upon you. There's a recognition of you before the Lord who is, our, is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. There it is again, to the praise of his glory. You are to the praise of his glory because of a responding to who he is and what he did for you, even as he called you, even as he knocked on your heart's door and he's saying to you, you are chosen. You've allowed for me to be a part of your existence and there's a guarantee, there's, a, there's this seal upon us of the Holy Spirit. Praise God, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You belong to him. If you've given your life to Jesus, you belong to him. You belong to him. And those who are with him are called, they're chosen and faithful. Now here's where we may say, hmm, I don't know. Am I faithful enough? Am I faithful enough? This word by definition, says, uh, this word of faithful, it says, of persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business, the execution of commands, or the discharge of official duties. Okay. Lord, you might be at a place where you're you're saying, well, this is my life. This is what I'm doing. I gave my life to Jesus. I didn't know I was chosen, but okay, I, I believe, yes, I'm chosen. But am I faithful? I want you to know, if you want to be faithful, humble yourself before the Lord. In these passages, it's talking about Jesus Christ, it's also talking about the Lamb. It's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to the execution of commands, I've come to recognize if I'm not submitted to somebody, and it starts at a very early age, if I'm not submitted or I... I don't like somebody or, you know, even as we we're growing up as children, our parents said something, we didn't like it. And so we might stomp our feet. We might say no. It starts very early on, this thing of, can I submit? Can I submit to the Lord? I, I know we can't always submit to man because... Man is so flawed and faulted. Man, I, I, yeah, Dave is, is really flawed and faulted. Listen, I'm, this is not, we're not being faithful to Pastor Dave or anybody else, but let us be faithful to the Lord. Lord, I can humble myself before one that demonstrated his love for me before I was even saved, even as I was still a sinner. You demonstrated your love for me. And I may even have been so opposed to God and especially to Jesus Christ. 
I want nothing to do with him. I was an enemy of the cross. And yet Jesus died for me. Yeah, you know what? I can submit to him. I need to submit to his lordship in my life. Because then it is easy to fulfill the ex execution of commands. So as the Lord would say, hey, I have a plan and purpose for your life. I have a will for your life that is good and acceptable, and it is perfect. Just, could you do this? Lord, this is what this year was about, being all that we could be for his glory. Listen, we can't be all that we can be if I'm not, if I'm not totally surrendered to him. Jesus is Lord in my life. Jesus needs to be Lord in my life. I'll tell you, not only when it comes to, to humility, the opposite of humility is, huh? Is pride. The opposite of humility is pride. And where there's pride, pride says, no, I'm not listening to you. Who do you think you are? Because I'm Lord in my life. I'm Lord in my life. Man, pride shuts things down for us. Lord, let there be no pride in me. Lord, I humble myself before you to be obedient to you. I submit to your lordship. I submit to your lordship. So persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business or in this case in, in, in our interaction with the Lord, the execution of his commands or the discharge of official duties that I will do what the Lord would have me do. A person that is faithful is one who is kept, who has kept his plighted faith worthy of trust. can be relied on. So part of it, there's this action of us doing certain things for, for the Lord. But let me tell you the second part of this thing of being faithful. And I believe that this is where the doing part is taken care of. Listen carefully. It has to do with being easily persuaded. It has to do with believing confiding or trusting someone or something, in this case, God. In the New Testament, New Testament, one who trusts in God's promises, and then it goes, breaks it down even more, one who is convinced that Jesus has been raised from the dead, that Jesus died, he was buried, and that he was raised from the dead. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can believe that. It's something that he's done, and I'm placing my faith in him. Let your heart be easily persuaded. Is it that simple? And I'm saying to you, yes, because I desire for you to be with him, that we would be with him together when we are riding behind him as he is on that white horse. And he is king of kings and lord of lords. In chapter 19, a few chapters later, it describes this event that has not taken place, but that will be. It says, followed by the saints, those that are wrapped and dressed in white, his righteousness wrapped around us. And we are going into this battle. We are with him because we've been faithful Faithful to what we believe, convinced that Jesus has been raised from the dead and one who has been become convinced that Jesus is the Messiah and the author of salvation. I believe that he has saved me. This aspect of faith, being faithful, we can say yes to. And the other parts then will come as we recognize this on a regular basis, that Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for us was not just for us when we first came to him, but is for us today. My faith that saved me the moment 
I gave my life to Jesus and I, I believed on who he is and what he did for me on that cross and I received him into my life and I was saved is the same faith that I need to have today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Daily, denying faith in self or anything else, I deny any other faith and I take up the cross daily. Daily, I take up the cross. I am placing my faith daily in Jesus Christ and what he did for me. This part is easy. So simple. Lord, let my faith be there so that I can fulfill the other parts because the next thing that Jesus says in Luke 9, 23 is not only deny yourself and take up the cross daily, but the next part is follow me. We cannot follow if there's pride, if there's arrogance within us. No, I can't, I'm not sorry, I'm not doing that one, Jesus. But if our faith is in the right thing, the power and the wisdom of God is made available to us. That's why Paul says we preach Christ crucified. The wisdom and the power of God. The wisdom and power of God coming through even just a simple message. Yes, I will believe. And for me then it is easy. Lord, I will humble myself before you. You are seated on the throne of my life. You are Lord of my life. I will be obedient to you. And as I close here, Romans 10 verse 5. It says, for Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. Trying to keep the law. Man, can't do it. The man who does those things shall live by them. If you're going to live by the law, know this. You won't be able to keep the law. No one can. No one can keep the law. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. We can't do it. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. We can't do that. But what does it say? This word. The righteousness of faith speaks in this way. That if you confess with your mouth. Listen. The Lord Jesus. Not just Jesus. But the Lord Jesus. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I declare that daily. I make a confession with my mouth and I believe it in my heart. Jesus, who you are, what you did for me on the cross, I believe and you and what you did for me. And you are Lord of my life. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Can we stand? I want you to know. He has called you. And he is calling. If, if, you're, if you haven't let him in, he is calling you. To, to say, can I come into your life? Can I save you from your sins? Can I be Lord in your life? So, today, if he's calling you, if he's knocking on your heart's door, just respond and let him in. If you've wandered away from him and he's on the outside again, you say, no, no, no I'm pushing you out, Lord. You're not Lord in my life. I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. And we, you've wandered away. And he's come back and he's knocking on your heart's door. Let him in. Let him come in. To be called. Chosen. Lord, I'm going to be faithful. 
I'm going to be faithful. The Lord is coming back soon. The beautiful thing is, this, this man, as he said, and it's the second time now I've heard this, probably in the last year, year and a half, where somebody, like this man, like I say, I did not, I've never met this man before. And he said, there will be people pressing to get in to this place. Folks, those, and let me just, is Catherine here, Catherine here this morning? Where are you, Catherine? Catherine? Okay, I see you. You know what? He said, is there a, do you know a Catherine? Is there a Catherine in your church? I said, yeah, I know a Catherine. And he says, I want you to tell Catherine that God wants to work through you in powerful ways. I said, yeah, I know Catherine. Even before he said anything, he says, I said, she, she's someone that brings others into hear the word of God, to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Catherine, you and I have not arrived yet. We haven't arrived yet. And he's working on it. We're working on it, but even more so, he's working on it. And so this man that has never met you called you by name to say, is there a Catherine that God wants to work through you to continue to see others come to Christ? And not just Catherine now. I want to say through and for every single one of you that is here that would say, you know what, I'm going to respond to, to Jesus calling my name, knocking on my door. I'm going to respond to let him into my life because the things that are coming yet. It was about a year. Within the last year or so, somebody came to me and said, I saw this vision of people's faces pressed against the windows at the front wanting to come in. And I guess maybe part of it was the fact that there, there was no room left here in this place. I believe the Lord wants to work through you in such powerful ways. And the prayers that have already gone up, you say, Lord, will you ever answer these prayers? The Lord is saying, oh man, these, the prayers that you are praying for others, they're good prayers. And continue to pray them and to believe them and to continue to be a light. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the Lord will work through me to be the person that I need to be that I will be with him on this day, this battle, called, chosen, and faithful. Because we're called, chosen, and faithful. In this coming year, I'll tell you what the Lord has given. To me, I already started praying back in September. And over the course of the September, the Lord has given and expanded and has confirmed and is confirming the word. Anyways, no, I, I'm going to keep this service. It's already too long. All right. <laughs> Lord, if there's anybody here that do, they know about you, but they have not given their life to you, I pray right now in Jesus' name that they will give their life to you. Lord, I pray right now. Lord, those that we know that have not given their life, they've been told that we would not Give up, because you did not give up on us. And Lord, I pray that there will be salvation that would come, even as you knock on hearts' doors this morning. And Lord, I just pray, if there are any, anyone here this morning, they say, I have heard of Jesus. Maybe I've even used his name in vain as a swear word. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. If you need to be forgiven, the Lord wants to forgive you. It says, as we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Lord, forgive sins. Right now, just ask the Lord quietly, Lord, forgive me of my sins, even where I used your name in vain. Even where I, I was doing my own thing because I'm so smart. 
I'm so full of pride because I got it all figured out and I'm going to do what I want to do. I confess it. Lord, I confess these things that are opposed to you because you're not Lord in my life. I confess all these things. I confess, as it says here in Romans, I confess with my mouth you, Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead so I can have salvation. Because there is no other way to be saved from an eternity apart from you, from not being with you. There is only one way. It is through you. And the confession of my mouth and the, the faith that, that I would believe in, that it would be in you, that you died for me. I confess it and I, can, I believe it in my heart. Because as your word says, with the heart one believes unto righteous, to be in right standing with you. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so I'm making that confession with my mouth and I'm believing in my heart. And I know I will not be put to shame. Lord, at your coming. Because I... And making you Lord in my life. Let me fulfill your will in my life. Let me be faithful to execute your commands. Because I'm making you Lord. I want you to know that the commands and the purposes that God has for you are amazing. Let them be done before his return. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Lord, even as you would call on my name, even as you would come and knock on my heart's door and in, on my life, I'm saying yes to you, Jesus. Come into my life. I receive you as Lord in my life. Hallelujah. That is you this morning. If you're receiving Christ into your life, or maybe you're getting things right again. That you would make a confession of that. Let others know I've given my life to Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. Let me read again. These will make war with the Lamb. Should the Lord come back today, it'll be in about seven years. There will be a battle that this world has never known. And the Lamb will overcome them. The Lamb will overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Is that you this morning? Is that you this morning? Is that you this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God that there would be others that would come to know the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. As we end this year, Lord, as we close this year, that you would be glorified in our lives for 2024. There would be amazing things done. Lord, that there would be much accomplished as we are faithful to execute your commands because you are Lord in our life. Jesus, you are Lord in my life, in our lives. Let your will be done and you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, everyone says, amen. amen. It was great having you here today. If you want to listen to more messages, you can click here or here. Also, check out our website, lighthouseniagara.com, for more information and podcasts and also to give. God bless you. Have a great day.